This was Bedelia, beautiful and charming. She radiated a curious innocence, eager to fascinate those she attracted, like a poisonous flower. I first met her in Monte Carlo. That is where the strange story of Bedelia begins. Monte Carlo, in the autumn of 1938. Merci beaucoup, madame. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir, madame. Oh, Mr. Cheney, uh, Mr. Martin, if it is okay. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely little dog. You must find me one like that. Entrez. Ah, Monsieur Cheney. Bonjour, Monsieur Martin. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Uh, will you not sit down? I see that you have found a friend. What a lovely creature. Yes, isn't she? Ah, my poor innocent young friend, I fear for you. There is not a woman in Monte Carlo that will not be attracted by that dog. You think so? You are just in time. The lady should be here any moment now. Will you uh, introduce me? Yes, of course, if she's interested in your offer. Even if she's not, I'd still like to meet her. Your letter of introduction only says that you are a bar of their pearls. Now, please, mon ami, uh, tell me, is it the pearl you're after or the lady? We all have our secrets, Monsieur Martin. Of course, of course, if you wish, but I warn you that if it is the lady, then you are wasting your time. There is no chance for you. Uh, you don't know me, Monsieur Martin. No, but I know my customer. She's here on her honeymoon, and it seems unhappily for you to be a very happy one. You told me she was married before. First honeymoon is one thing. Second can be very different. Oh, Madame Carrington, you understand, is not the divorcee type. Her first husband, who died, was rich. Oh, very, very rich. But her new husband, she loves. Too bad. The lady and the pearl are both here. She brought me that black pearl, one of the most perfect I have ever seen, and asked me to design a setting. Just one moment. I will see what I can do for you. Bonjour, madame. Are you satisfied? More than satisfied. I'm delighted. I've never seen such a beautiful setting. Oh, worthy of such a pearl. And the hand that will wear it. It's lovely. Uh, permit me. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. Mm. It is without the flaw. Madame, should you ever wish to sell it? Oh, I shan't. Ever. But if you should, madame, you will give me a chance. My offer would be generous. How much? 100,000 francs. One hundred thousand francs. No, Mr. Martin, I'm sorry. This pearl is not for sale. You'll send my bill to the Imperial Hotel? Of course, madame. I hope madame is enjoying her stay in Monte Carlo. Very much, thank you. Goodbye. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir. Madame Carrington, excuse me, please. Monsieur Carrington left a message. She's in the salon de lecture. Oh, thank you. Madame. C'est vrai beaucoup, madame. He never buzz and sell, Charles. Hello. Hello, darling. Had a nice afternoon. What have you been doing? Nothing. With a bit of window gazing thrown in. <laughs> I bought this. What a lovely tie. Who for? For me. I love dogs. You are a child still, aren't you, Biddy? I love it when you call me Biddy. What have you been doing? Not writing letters all afternoon? What's that? Oh, my camera. Ellen sent it. Thoughtful of her, wasn't it? Ellen? 
Oh, yes, your secretary. No, darling, not my secretary. I told you, my junior partner. Oh, well, she's something to do with your stuffy old business. Steady, hold it. Charlie, don't. What is it? What's the matter? I don't like having my photograph taken. You don't? Why ever not? I'm not photogenic. Oh, 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 who told you that? Several cameras. Oh, not this one. This camera can't lie. Uh, no, I say. Darling, don't be absurd. Oh, something happens to me when I look into a camera. I'd sooner face a dentist than a photographer. I haven't got a single picture of you. Well, haven't you something better? You've got me. <laughs> Let's go out. Can I bring my camera? Well, if you promise to confine yourself to picture postcard views. <laughs> <laughs> Is my bill ready, madame? Yes, monsieur. Here it is. We are sorry you are leaving us. Have we not made you comfortable? Very comfortable, thank you, madame. Then I hope we shall see you again. I hope so, too. I'm just leaving for business reasons. Voila, madame, c'est juste. Merci, monsieur. Ah, what about your letters? Would you send them to the Hotel Imperial, please? Yes, most certainly. You will ruin yourself there. I think it'll pay me in the end. Merci, madame. Au revoir. Bonjour, monsieur. I'll go and get the letters. Order some drinks, darling. What for you? Now, that's a very serious question. I know. Bisky soda. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new idea. I've made an original woman. <laughs> Tell me long. Madame, it's satisfied with acceptable. The soleil ne dérange pas, madame. Oh, no, no, pas du tout. J'adore le soleil. Et madame désire? Um, a perno, s'il vous plaît. Un whisky soda. Immediately, madame, à vos services. Come from. Je trouve ce design très bon. La madame, she's... Oui, monsieur, madame est ravissante. I speak English too. Yeah. <laughs> it's really very good. She is attractive, isn't she? You'll be wasting your time. She's on her honeymoon. Oh, is she? Just to say, I, uh, I think I'll ask her to have a drink with me. Would you like to hire a dog? Uh, what? I have it on the very best authority. But there is no crudeness, no vulgarity, when a small dog introduces a gentleman to a strange lady. May I offer you, William? <laughs> Thanks, but I'll risk it alone. Do you mind if I come along to observe your method? If you don't pull it off, I'll stand you a drink. By the way, my name's Cheney, Ben Cheney. Mine's character. Um, haven't I met you somewhere before, madame? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, wasn't it in Paris? Paris? Oh, oh yes, of course. And I'm told you're here on your honeymoon. I hope you'll be very happy. I'm sure I shall. I've married the most wonderful man in the world. Let's drink the wonderful man's health. Um, Biddy, may I present Mr. Cheney? Mrs. Carrington. I see. Now I know why you didn't need a dog. Hi. What do you have? A whiskey. Another whiskey. With it. Mr. Cheney's an artist, darling. He's done an awfully clever sketch of you. I see. Mrs. Carrington doesn't share your enthusiasm. Oh, it's not your fault, Mr. Cheney. I'm very hard to draw. You think so? Oh, she has some sort of obsession. Thinks she's not photogenic either. It's absurd. Isn't it? I say, what's this? Oh, that? I've had it for ages. But I've never seen it before. Oh, it's just a cheap little thing I picked up in Paris. It cost about 40 francs. Oh, I don't like to see it on you, darling. Oh, ever not. Well, I don't like artificial jewelry. But everybody wears it nowadays. It's very chic. I'm sorry, but I may be old-fashioned. I don't like my wife wearing imitations. I'm sorry you disapprove of my taste. Mrs. Carrington's quite right. She's not an easy subject. There, you see, Charlie, it's not just an obsession. But she's a very interesting one. Am I? To a painter. Your color's magnificent. Your lines are tempting. I'm speaking as an artist now. I'd love to paint you. Would you sit for me? 
course she'd be delighted, won't you, Biddy? Oh, I'm flattered. But I shall have to think about it. I must go and change. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Cheney. Oh, would you dine with me? I'm staying here. Oh, good, so are we. Well, come up to my room first and have a drink. I'd like to show you some of my work. Oh, we have a date for tonight. Thanks, all the same. Some other time, Cheney. Have you ever seen anything so blue as her eyes? Miss Quilt. Oh, she doesn't. She's perfect. Aren't you beautiful? I wish I could take her back with me. You can't, you know. What about the quarantine regulations? Oh, we get round those. Oh, it isn't as easy as all that. Besides, she doesn't even belong to you. Charlie. Hmm? Darling. Notice anything? I notice a very lovely hand. That silly old ring. I'm never going to wear it again. Because I criticized it. Oh, Lord. Did that worry you so much, darling? You married a bit of a prig, you know. You were quite right. Your taste is much better than mine. My sweet. Entree? J'espère qu'il ne vous dérange pas, madame. Madame est vraiment trop gentille envers ce repas. Si madame permet, je le reprends maintenant. Dites-moi, Ninette, combien demandez-vous pour ce chat? Je regrette, madame. Ce pas n'est pas à vendre. Mais je vous paierai bien. Non, non, madame, je ne pourrai jamais m'en séparer. Vous êtes en train de vendre, Betty. Vous ne pouvez pas prendre ce chat à New England. Oh, c'est facile. Je vais le garder dans mon sac de bague et flirter avec le customs inspector. Oh, non, vous ne pouvez pas. Pas quand vous êtes avec moi. Toutes les femmes se smuggent un peu, vous ne savez pas. Here you are, Ninette. Merci, monsieur. Thank you. Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir, madame. Bonsoir. I shall miss Topaz. I think you're horrid. Oh, darling, you don't really mean that, do you? <laughs> Charlie, even when I tease you, I love you. You know I do. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, eh bien, mon petit, t'es du retour. As-tu bu un feu ton dévoir? She brought you luck. She did indeed. Oh, I know, I know. We have had thousands of lonely ladies and gentlemen. Why, last year, one couple even got married. But you have had them for a long time, five days, I remember. And very pleasant days they've been. Now, monsieur, how much do I owe you? Yeah, five days, 50 francs. Your deposit was a hundred. Yes, how's the painting getting on? I've changed my style. Oh. Would you like to see? Yes. Nope, you have an excellent taste. Her name's Bedelia. Oh, what a lovely face and what a lovely name. Thank you, Monsieur. Thank, Thank you. you. Just a moment, Monsieur. My business card. Your friends also may appreciate our services. You never know. Bonjour, Monsieur. Bonjour, Monsieur. Just to round off the celebration, Biddy. Celebration? Our second wedding anniversary. Second? Two months today. <laughs> well, well. And still happily married. You know, looking at you two, even the hardened bachelor like me has his regrets. When I started on my holiday, I didn't think I'd end up married. You'll fall for it, too. And then you'll find out how much you've missed. Marriage is like religion. No one's as zealous as new converts. Don't you agree? Oh, I'm the only convert. My wife's been married before. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Carrington. I had no idea. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Cheney. How are you to know? Anyway, I think it's silly to be embarrassed about the past. I couldn't agree with you more. Would I make things worse if I said I hope the past was as happy as the present is? Most of it was very happy. And Charlie's making me forget the part that wasn't. Her husband was an artist in Paris. We had very little money, and it made things a bit difficult sometimes. I know what that can be like. By the way, I wonder whether I know your first husband's work. I doubt it. He would have been a great painter had he lived. He was just beginning to sell. His name was Burgess, Raoul Burgess. No, I don't think I've ever run across anything of his. If you ever do, would you get it for me? My wife hasn't one of his paintings. Of course I will. To your anniversary. To our guest. To Bedelia and her portrait. By the way, how's it going? 
slowly. Rather slowly. Excuse me, will you? Mr. Cheney, I'd rather you didn't go on with my portrait. Why not? I don't like sitting. It makes me nervous. You wouldn't deprive posterity of my masterpiece. So it is not worth my getting a headache every day. But your husband's so keen on it. You want to please him, don't we? Listen. Remember? They were playing this when we first met. Shall we dance? Wrong. He'll charge you an enormous fee for painting my portrait. What makes you think so? Well, I know artists. They don't stay in hotels like this unless they're looking for a chance to paint rich men's wives. Well, I'm not a rich man. He probably thinks you are. This is a very expensive hotel and we're spending as if we had millions. Well, you only go on your honeymoon once in your life. Oh, sorry, darling. <laughs> oh, it's very nice having money to spend. But I'd love you just as much if you hadn't any. Darling. All the same, I shan't let you charge you an outrageous fee. All right. Headache again? Tired. Just five minutes more. Bedelia? No one sitting for a portrait has any right to look as enchanting as you do. Why not? Because it's very disturbing. If you weren't happily married, mm -hmm. I should say more than I'm going to. Sometimes I paint what I think as well as what I see. I find it fascinating to try and catch not just the face or figure of my subject, but to portray the soul of my model with all its hidden secrets. To the artist, you're a puzzling subject. How puzzling? You ought to have red hair. Nature got her colors mixed when she was making you up. Betty! What's the matter, darling? How soon can you be packed? What's happened? We're going home. Sorry to drag you away from all this, but I can't help myself. Well, have the directors accepted your plan? They will, but I must be at the next meeting. Oh, it means a lot to you, doesn't it? Well, I'll pay more income tax. You're not deserting me. What about the portrait? Posterity will have to do without it. And so, unfortunately, will I. I must try and get up to Yorkshire sometime and finish it. That's a great idea. The Dales are a painter's paradise anyway. He must come, mustn't he, darling? Yes. Do come. Thank you, but it's not possible. But why not? We've plenty of room. Have you ever had an artist staying with you? Not like having the vicar to tea. He's <laughs> quite right, darling. Artists want a lot of space to mess about in. Take that up to my room, will you? Now, it's very nice of you, but it wouldn't work. I'm afraid I should need a studio. Well, we can find you a place in no time. My partner knows every house in the district. Oh, mais c'est impossible. Je ne veux pas croire mes yeux. Madame Dulac, ma chère Madame Dulac. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Mais Madame, pour l'amour du ciel. Oh, pardon. Are you not Madame Theodore Dulac de Bordeaux? No, no. This is my wife. Oh, pardon. I'm sorry. But see you before we go. Sure. Oh, ça alors. Oh, c'est inexcusable. I was certain she was Madame du Lac de Bordeaux. Don't worry, we all make these mistakes. I know, I know, but I worry very much, monsieur. Me, who never forget a face, makes such a blonde. You seem disappointed. Did you know Madame du Lac well? Oh, her late husband was my very good friend. He left for paradise. His widow left no address. You mean she disappeared? Completely. Seems to have upset you. Was it very important? Oh, in itself, no. But in my business, we like to be correct and exact. Oh, forgive me, monsieur. What is your business? Uh, assurance sur la vie. Oh, pardon. Life insurance. Vous allez entendre maintenant Nocturno. Joué par M. Louis Stevens de la BBC Londres. Ben, 
Hello. I thought you were packing. When are you off? First thing in the morning. I came down to talk to you. I'm honored. Have a drink. No, thank you. Shall we go out on the terrace? Well? Did you mean what you said about coming to Yorkshire? Yes, I did. I wish you wouldn't. But that's why you came down. What about the portrait? The portrait's only an excuse. Excuse for what? I want you to stay away from me altogether. Do you? Why? I'm happily married. I intend to remain so. But your husband wants your portrait. That's not what you want. What do you think I want? Charlie likes you. He thinks you're his friend. I'm glad to know that. He trusts people. He's not like most men. When you're as sincere as he is, it just never occurs to you anybody else can be deceitful. But you'd never deceive your husband, Bedelia. Bedelia, just a minute. Where's that ring? That little 40-franc trinket worth 100,000 francs. It's not true. Monsieur Martin, the jeweler, is a friend of mine. He's also an expert on black pearls. I told you about Mary. She knows more about the Carringtons than all the rest of us put together. I hope you're not going to frighten me with any family skeletons. The Carringtons have no scandals, madam. Better be on your best behavior, Mrs. Carrington. You've a tradition to uphold. There's never been a Mrs. Carrington yet who didn't do that, Mr. Charles. And there won't be now. Thank you, Mary. Welcome uh, home, Master Charles. Well, well, Hannah, how are you? Darling, this is Mary's little sister. She comes in to help us when we need her. How do you do, Hannah? Well, darling, it's good to be home again. Here it is. What do you think of it? Charlie, it's perfect. Oh, that's where you burnt your initials. Yes, and got a jolly good walloping for it. <laughs> you must have been a little horror. Oh, and there's the old clock. Why, it's going. You told me it had stopped. <laughs> Charlie, I love it all. Do you? I'm glad you didn't see it in all its Victorian grandeur. Why? Oh, it was a museum of horrors. <laughs> the blessing your poor mother can't hear you say that, Mr. Charles. She liked things plain and solid. Proper Yorkshire, eh, Mary? So she ought to have been with ten generations behind her. More credit to her. Mary, I'm afraid your taste runs to red plush and stuffy ancestors. <laughs> Why, Ellen, dear? Charlie, you are looking well. Ah, marriage is a great tonic, Ellen. Here she is, Bedelia. Hello. I've heard so much about you. I do hope you're going to be very happy here, Mrs. Carrington. I'm sure I shall be. Oh, what a lovely Siamese. May I? Yes, it's for you. From Charles. Oh, Charlie, thank you. Thanks, Ellen. I never thought you'd find one in Yorkshire. It was a bit of a problem, I admit. They don't seem to go in for Siamese around here. Her name is Araminta. I shall call you Topaz. You've done a grand job on the house. Do you like it? Looks as if it's had its face lifted. Don't know what I'd do without you, Ellen. <laughs> what do you think of the fireplace? I took down the overmantel. I wasn't quite sure about it. Oh, it's a great improvement. Less like a caricature of the Albert Memorial, huh? It's a blessing your poor mother can't hear you now, Mr. Charles. <laughs> that overmantel was one of the old museum pieces, darling. My grandfather brought it from Italy. Well, what other surprise have you got for us? The dining room windows. You notice the difference? Oh, I like it. Now you can really see the rose garden. Come and have a look at it. That is our showpiece, isn't it, Ellen? Well, you're not being quite fair to the garden. November's the very worst time of the year to see it. When the roses are in bloom, it's divine. I'm sure it must be. Divine. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Carrington. Hello, Miss Jenkins. How are you? Oh, I can't complain, thank you. Mr. Carrington's not in. Well, where is he? Down at the new mill site. Is Miss Walker here? No, she's with Mr. Carrington. But they ought to be back any minute now. I'll wait.
the difference. Oh, hello, darling. This is a surprise. I've been shopping. You're going to drive me home. Of course. Now, if you sit down quietly, I've got a few things I want to clear up with Ellen. Oh, bring her back with us. You can work in the study, and then she can stay on to supper. Well, we've got quite a lot to do. Oh, please, darling. <laughs> Miss Jenkins, what are the arrangements for tomorrow? The board meeting at 10.30, and it told Mr. Johnston about your insurance. Oh, that's for you. For me? Mm, I'm increasing my life insurance. Darling. Anything else? You saw a personal letter from Paris? No, what is it? I put it on your desk. Well, I can't see it. Oh, here it is. Right, thanks, Miss Jenkins. Oh, hello, Bedelia. Here's the contract, Charlie. You're coming home with us. Am I? Do come. You can finish your work and then we'll eat. Well, I shouldn't really. The Bennets usually expect me for bridge on Monday. Well, tell them you have a headache. Oh, she will get one if she plays bridge with the Bennets. <laughs> it ought to be a good supper. It's Mary's night out and I'm going to make a fish casserole. You're in for a treat. Casserole a la Bedelia. Come on. These are good. First rate. Mean it? I wouldn't say so if I didn't. Of course, we're only roughed out so far. I know. They've got the Carrington touch already. That's good. I'm glad you like them. It was your verdict I wanted. Ready for a drink? Yes, thanks, darling. Aren't you going to have one with us? Well, I felt I was interrupting your work. No, of course. You're sure? Oh, quite sure. Good work, Ellen. We've got a lot done and we deserve our drinks. You know, you're very lucky. Me? Lucky? Well, there's so much of his life you share, but I don't. Oh, I've forgotten about this. Ah, Cheney. Well, cheers. Cheers. Great news. Helen, do you know of a studio in the neighborhood? Studio? For a painter friend of ours, a chap we met in Monte Carlo. He's doing a portrait of Bedelia. How exciting. Aren't you thrilled, Bedelia? The studio around here, that's even harder to find than the Siamese cat. Ben says he's never forgotten what I said about the Dales, the painter's paradise, remember? Yes. Well, he can be with us for Christmas. That'll be fun. Sends his love to you, dear. Does he? He wants a cottage or a barn that he can use as a studio. You know, big windows, north, light, all that. Will you answer that, Hannah, please? Well, yes, sir. That's me, Anna. Oh, I like it here. Annie likes me, too. He would have a rare job of it, you know, to keep the place tidy, what with these brushes and paints and canvases and all. Yes, I expect I can manage that. Well, I can ask him. Mr. Cheney. Mm? Mrs. Carrington wants to know if you can spare me to go over and help with the Christmas party. Certainly, Hannah. Uh, perhaps I could come with you in the car. With pleasure. Hello, hello, hello. It's all right, I can come. Hmm. Goodbye, Mary.
Christmas to you, Mary. And to you, Pepper. Can I get your coat? If you don't mind. Oh, thank you, my darling. Are we the first arrivals? Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Covington will be down in a minute. Well, don't you worry about us, Mary. We'll be perfectly all right. We'll look after ourselves. Charlie, Sylvia Johnson's back from London. No mistaking that voice. Yes, but we've nothing for her. Well, is that so tragic? We've presents for everybody else. Oh, we'll think of something. Come on, darling, let's get down. Merry Christmas to thee! Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas darling! Merry Christmas. Oh, it's Christmas wonderful Christmas. to see you two adorable people again. Aren't you simply amazed to see me back in Leeds, sir? Oh, we hoped you'd be here for our party. And you're the very, very first to know. We're not divorcing after all. Alice making far too much money. I knew we should finish up here. <laughs> Honey, child, I got a wee little present for you. Oh! Thank you. But you must open it immediately. We're dying to see how you like it. She got it up in London. Do please open it. Not now. We're going to open all our presents later. Are we all having presents? But how nice. <laughs> Do come and sit by the fire. Excuse me, I'll get some drinks. Did you have a very gay time in London? Gay? London? It was dull, dreary, drab, cold, foggy. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> Excuse me. And as for the rich, you're just simply not in it unless you're covered with me. Hello, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. We very nearly didn't get here. One of our patients has a little Christmas surprise on the way. Uh, yes, well, I hope it isn't born before that Christmas tree's unloaded. How nice of you to come, Mr. Winston. Oh, I couldn't miss coming to wish you every possible happiness on your first Christmas in the North. Hello, Vicar. So glad you were able to come. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas my boy. Come and sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Did it? Hmm? Oh, I have an inspiration Christmas, about Mrs. Sylvia's Bennett. present. And to you, sir. Tell you later. Right. Here we are. Happy Christmas, Mrs. Bennett. I had no idea it was to be such a grand party. With us, Christmas is just a simple family celebration. Happy Christmas. Oh, happy uh, Christmas. Edward. Oh, sir. A little remembrance for you, my dear. Oh, thank you. How sweet of you. Well, Christmas comes but once a year. My dear Mrs. Bennett, what a heavenly gown. That is really something out of another world. Wherever did you get it? Surely not in Leedsford. What's the great inspiration for Sylvia's present? The pearl ring. That imitation pearl, the one you had at Monte Carlo. Oh, we can't give her that. Well, why not? You said it looked cheap. Well, it did on you, my dear, but it won't on Sylvia. We can give her something else. Well, I don't see why you're making such a fuss about a little ring you never even wear. We can't give Sylvia that ring because I haven't got it anymore. Well, what's happened to her? I've given it away. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? You didn't give me a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. No, darling, it was my fault. I should have told you sooner. <laughs> We'd better join the others. You hand around the cocktails and I'll go upstairs and see what I can find for Sylvia. Right. Merry Christmas, Ellen. Same to you, Ben. Hello, Ellen, darling. How wonderful to see you again. Hey, Sylvia. May I introduce Mr. Cheney? Mrs. Johnson. How do you do? How are you? Excuse me just a minute while I get rid of this thing. Mm, mm, mm. Who's that gorgeous hunk of man? Tell me something about him, he married? Well, I haven't heard that he has a wife. Is he wealthy? Has he got any money? Sylvia, really? Oh, Ellen, darling, don't be so naive. When a handsome man like that comes to a town like this, it's a girl's duty to know all the facts. I'm afraid I know yeah. nothing about him. Do you mean to tell me he's never dated you? Yes, I've done. Well, then you must know something about him. Well, he doesn't talk much about himself. Oh, how strange for a man. Happy Christmas, Bedelia. Happy Christmas, Bedelia. Sir Taney, some of your favorites. Smoked salmon. Thank you, Hannah. Spoil me. Charlie, everybody, come and get your presents. Christmas tree, everybody. Thank you. And you, darling. What on earth are you doing? You're rehearsing. What are you rehearsing? Well, you see, whenever my wife Sylvia receives a present, I have to say, isn't that wonderful? Oh, isn't that wonderful, Bedelia, darling? Thanks a million. And you too, Charlie. She didn't know what to get you, Sylvia, but that sauce is so useful. Oh, you're opening my present, do. I'm dying to see how you both like it. Sylvia! I say, look! You shouldn't have bought her such an extravagant profession. Why not? We both simply adore Charlie and you. Oh, yes, dear, but we can't deserve this. That must have cost the Johnstons a pretty penny. Shh. None of our business. It's got into Johnston. Why are you spending all that money on a present to the Carrington? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I was trying to show my appreciation for all the extra business he's given me lately. I couldn't afford to increase my insurances with business as it is. 
would, old boy, if you're married to Bedelia. He's just taken out an enormous policy in her favor. Wise man. Life insurance is the best investment of all. What do you say, Vicar? You must have seen many a man die leaving his widow with a... I say. She's very sensitive, I think. Eh, hey, Doctor? Yes, I think she is. Sylvia would only ask, how much? <laughs> Party's going very well, isn't it, darling? Yes. I wonder who this is from. Oh, Ben. Mr. Cheney, I'm simply dying to ask you a question, may I? Oh, please do. I'd hate to have a body on my hands. Why ever did you come to Leeds? Any particular reason why I shouldn't have come? Oh, no, except I can't imagine anybody coming for no reason at all. You're here, aren't you? Oh, Mr. Cheney, I had no idea you cared. I say, Biddy, look! Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> but do tell me, why are you here? You'll be surprised. Excuse me. <laughs> Almost anybody can cut me out. It's a good thing I'm my own type. You like it? Thank you, Ben. Is it one of yours? Don't you recognize it? Raoul Burgess. 37. That's only a year ago. It was one of his last. Painted about a month before he died. Yes. Yes, of course. Where'd you find it? In Paris, just after I left Monte Carlo. You asked me to look out for a Burgess, remember? Yes. Bit of luck, wasn't it? I told Monsieur Pichard I'd met you. He sent his regards. Thank you. Pichard? Who's he? The man who bought Burgess's pictures. Excuse me. Oh, I'll do that, Hannah. You go and help Mary. I simply must look at the picture. Oh, splendid. Mind you, I don't understand art, but I know what I like. What's wrong, Bedelia? You seem nervous. This is our first party. I want it to be a success. I'm sorry if I brought back unhappy memories. I didn't mean to. Am I forgiven for choosing that particular present? I'm extremely grateful. Charlie seems to like it. That must make you very happy. Naturally. I agree with you about Charlie. He's so honest himself, one hates to deceive him. If you don't mind. I've never seen you look so lovely, Bedelia. Even lovelier than that last night at Monte Carlo. Oh, Bedelia. Charlie was wondering, isn't it time for dinner? I've just finished lighting the candles. Don't they look nice? Would you mind opening the door? Ooh, doesn't that look stunning, Bedelia? Come on in, everybody. Dinner. <laughs> Hey, Mrs. Bennett, here you are. Doctor. Biddy, you're a wonderful hostess. I can't remember a gayer party in this house. We must have another one soon. What's the matter? I wish I could go away. Biddy. I thought you were happy here, aren't you? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, don't ever stop loving me. Oh, my darling, what... What's wrong? You're not ill, are you? No, no, I, I'm all right. I... But you are ill. You're as white as a sheet. Oh, it's nothing. Something I've eaten, probably. I... You'd better go straight to bed. I'll bring you a powder. <laughs> One of those awful bubbly things of yours. Well, they helped you before, didn't they? Yes. Come along. I'll, uh... I'll just see to the fire. You sure you'll be all right? Yes, yes, quite sure. Mr. Cheney, you haven't eaten your porridge. 
That comes of all the smoked salmon you had at the party last night. I like smoked salmon, Hannah, and I don't like porridge. When you've been here a bit, you'll eat your porridge in the morning like we all do. Hello, hello, hello. Who is it? Oh, it's you, Mary. See? Eh? Mr. Carrington? Hey, that's bad. Food poison. Well, is there anything we can do? Would you like me to come over and help you? Mary, hello. Hey, Mr. Cheney, whatever you think's happened to Mr. Carrington. Good morning, Mary. Hannah gave me the news. How's Mr. Carrington? Oh, Mr. Cheney has been right poorly all night. Did you get the doctor? He couldn't come. He was with the Mason's baby. He's here now. What's he say? It's all them fancy foods last night. That's what I say. Mrs. Carrington must have been very worried. How'd she take it? I wish you'd seen her, sir. If it hadn't been for her, he'd been laid out by now. What exactly did she do for him? Whatever she did was right, I'm sure of that. Wouldn't you like to wait in the hall? Mrs. Carrington will be down in a minute. Thank you, Mary. Goodbye, Charlie. We'll have you up and about in no time. Tell me, Dr. McAfee, please. How bad is he? I'll be honest, I don't know yet. But it's no use you worrying till I do know. Is it something you're afraid to tell me? When he feels better, I'll give him a thorough overhaul. You could have seen him last night. It was probably something he ate. Good morning, Bedelia. I'm sorry to hear about Charlie. Anything I can do? No, thank you. You must have had a bad night. May I? Thanks. How is the patient, Doctor? Getting along pretty well, thanks to this little lady's good sense. You must try to get some rest, my dear. Aren't you having a nurse? I don't need one. Don't you think it'd be a good idea, Doctor? There's not much to do. And Delia's proved she's very capable. But she looks worn out. I prefer to look after my husband myself. Then you shall, my dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for everything. Take care of yourself. I'll look in again tonight. Goodbye, Mr. Cheney. Oh, Doctor, may I have a word with you? I have a very busy morning. If you're driving into town, can I come along? All right. Bye, Delia. But I fail to understand your interest in this case, Mr. Cheney. Charlie's a friend of mine, Doctor, and I think... That's no reason why you should tell me how to diagnose a case. Now, don't misunderstand me, Doctor. I'm not criticizing. It's just that there's something I think you ought to know. There's nothing about Charlie Carrington that I don't know. I pulled that boy through diphtheria and measles. The day he was born, I held him by the heels and I slapped the breath into him. What are you trying to tell me, Mr. Cheney? What's this? Investigator? Detective, look here. What is this all about? I made this for you, darling. Please try and drink it. I can't understand why Ellen hasn't phoned. Well, not to worry about the office. But darling, this is serious. A load of timber from Scotland. That again. But it means a lot of money. Now, why hasn't she phoned? Because I told her you were not to be disturbed. Now, drink your barley water. It'll do you good. Oh, I'm not as ill as all that. You were last night. You frightened me, Charlie. All right, Betty. I'll drink your barley water. <laughs> now, if that's Ellen, I'm not going to let her worry you. Don't be so jumpy, darling. You need rest more than I do. Come in. It's Dr. McAfee, madam. Oh, what does he want? He didn't say madam. Hello. I have a call up the road, and I thought I'd pop in and see how you're getting on. But you said you weren't coming back till this evening. I've changed my mind about the treatment. In fact, I've engaged a nurse. She's on her way. Don't you think I'm the best nurse for my husband? You said before that... Take it easy, darling. Sit down. What's the idea? Am I as ill as all that? Better safe than sorry. The after effects of food poisoning sometimes need watching more carefully than one expects. And it's for Bedelia's sake too, Charlie. She needs rest. That's what I said. How long have you been having this trouble? Oh, a few weeks, months perhaps. Doesn't bother me very much. Bedelia gives me something for it. What does she give you? Oh, it's just a sedative. I take it myself. It works. It's all good stuff. Hmm. Made up in Paris. It's a prescription my doctor gave me. May I? I'd like to find out about one of these miracle cures. Now try and get to sleep, Charlie. You too, Bedelia. The nurse will be here at six, and she will be in complete charge, you understand? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Miss 
Walker of Carrington & Company. I telephoned you several times today. Yes, miss? Have you any news of that load of timber from Inverness? I've got the dispatch note here. Oh, I talked to station master, miss. Yes? He'd like to see the dispatch note. Good. Uh -huh. It's the 535 to And this is Nurse Harris. How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Carrington quite understands, Nurse, that you are in complete charge of the patient. Mary, what are you doing? Making the bed up in here, Mum. But the nurse is asleep in there. She told me to make the guest room up for you. For me? Doctor's orders, Mrs. Carrington. The chemist boy has just brought this, madam. Anything that comes from Mr. Carrington, Mary, should be given to me. Excuse me. Is that for Mr. Carrington? Yes, I thought he might like some gruel today. The doctor told me exactly what to give him, Mrs. Carrington. Your milk, Mr. Carrington. How long is this going on? I don't know. Darling, why don't you get rid of her? You're so much better. Yes, I'll have a talk to Dr. McAfee. We... Here it is. Will you drink it now, please? It's your bedtime. Yes, I suppose so. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Sleep well. Good night, nurse. Good night. And then what do you think I discovered? They'd made a mistake and sent the stuff to leave. When are we going to get it? Every minute means money down the drain. Well, we've got a claim against them for what it's worth, but I suppose, as usual, the railway will be right. I'm afraid so. Come in. Mr. Cheney, madam. Ask him to come up. That's not necessary. May I join the party? Of course, Ben. Hello, Come in. Hello, Bedelia. Hi, Ben. Well, Charlie, how are you? I'm fine. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You certainly look better than I expected. Well, so I ought to. Three devoted women looking after me night and day. I was so worried when I heard you'd engaged a nurse. I thought you must be... At death's door, eh? Otherwise, a Yorkshireman wouldn't coddle himself. Of course, I wouldn't have agreed if my wife hadn't forced... Oh, now, darling. <laughs> By the way, how's the portrait coming along? It isn't. My model's been on a holiday. Mm. When are you going to sit again, Bedelia? How about tomorrow? Do you change for you, darling? Oh, this is our nurse. Nurse Harris, Miss Walker. How do you do? How do you do? And Mr. Cheney. How do you do? How do you do? Down for your medicine, Mr. Carrington. Mm. Nurse Harris looks very efficient, Bedelia. Where did you find her? If I'm ever ill, I must ask you to get someone like that for me. Dr. McAfee recommended her. Good afternoon, Miss. Hello, Anna. It's Mr. Cheney at home. I was listening about the old place. Would you like to go in? Thanks. Hello, Ellen. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, not at all. Glad of the excuse. The light's gone anyway. Let me take your coat. No, thank you. Won't you sit down? Ben, I've come to ask you something. It's rather important. Wouldn't it be easier sitting down? Have a cigarette. This is rather difficult for me. I don't like interfering in other people's affairs, but this time, one of my best friends is involved. Involved in what? I don't know. That's why I've come to see you. There's something odd going on. In Leedsford? Never. Oh, please don't be flippant. You know perfectly well what I mean. There's some sort of an intrigue, and that woman is in it. What woman? The nurse. Intrigue with Nurse Harris? Or why should you think that? Because at the station you obviously knew her well. But at Charlie's house you pretended you'd never even met her before. Dr. McAfee engaged Nurse Harris. Aren't you letting your imagination run away with you? You can't put me off like that. Why did you try to deceive Charlie? Adelia was there too, wasn't she? What do you want to do, warn Charlie? Yes. You'd better be careful. You can't do that without bringing Adelia into it. I know what I'm doing. Do you? Could look like jealousy, couldn't it? I shall risk that. All right. You're going over to tell him right away? Yes. I'll come with you. Should be an interesting party. 
But everything looks so lovely covered with snow. I was brought up in Cornwall. We don't see much of it down there. You think we're in for a blizzard, Charlie? Looks very much like it. How long will it last? Oh, two days, maybe three. Do the roads get blocked? If it's a bad one, let's have a look at the forecast. I hope the trains don't get held up. I've got a friend coming down from Edinburgh. More tea, Ellen. Yes, please, just half. Heavy snow. Mm, I doubt if your friend will make it. I expected him just after Christmas, but he got held up by storms at sea. He's a ship's captain. Interesting chap. I'd like you to meet him. By all means, bring him round sometime. I think you'll find him amusing. His name's Captain McKelvey. When I was a boy, I always dreamed of being a sailor. Most boys do, sailors always. I think how dreadful it is to be a volunteer. Mrs. Carrington, the tea! Oh, how silly of me. I must be getting along. Thank you for the tea, Bedelia. Goodbye. Goodbye. When are you going to sit for your portrait again? I hate leaving things unfinished. I'll let you know. Ben, are you going into town? Sorry, afraid not, Ellen. I'm going straight home. I've got to put through a call to Edinburgh. Well, we'll come and dig you out in the morning. <laughs> right. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye. Oh. You all right, darling? I have a slight headache. It's nothing. I'll lie down for a while. Goodbye, Ellen. Come again soon. Goodbye. You mind switching on the light, nurse? Don't go. It's early, yeah? Charlie. What is it? Something wrong? No, it's nothing. I must go. It's getting dark. Ellen. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the Delia lately? Peculiar? Well, she's so nervous. Not like herself at all. I thought it was the shock of my illness, but she seems to be getting worse instead of better. I wonder if you could talk to her. Me? Well, you women talk more easily about these things. Try and distract her. Get her out of the house. Perhaps you ought to start sitting for Ben again. You will have a word with her, won't you? Yes, of course I will, if you want me to. I knew you'd help me. Are you coming to the office tomorrow? No, the doctor says I'd better take it easy for a bit. You come here. Please do. Charlie. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. Never heard you talk like that before. I must go. What time do the trains leave for London? Tonight. 8.45 and 11.30. Madam? Oh, yes, Mary. Could we have early dinner and then you can wash up before you go into town? But it isn't my evening off, madam. Isn't it? Oh, well, take it anyway. Didn't you say you wanted to see your cousin? Oh, yes, madam. You haven't had an evening off since Mr. Carrington's been ill. It's very kind of you, madam, but really, I think... What's for dinner, Mary? Well, you ordered beef for us, but I don't know what she's planning for Mr. Carrington. Mr. Carrington will have beef as well. But what will she say with her duties, responsibilities and doctor's orders? dinner, Mary. Forty years I've lived in this house, and the only person I took orders from was the mistress. And I gave you my orders. What's that? An omelette for Mr. Carrington. But that's absurd. Mr. Carrington isn't ill any longer. Dish up the beef, Mary. I will that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Carrington. But as long as I'm on this case, I am responsible. You're not responsible for the running of this house, nurse. I'm getting tired of your interference, and I'm not going to stand it any longer. I'm not trying to run this house, and I'm not interfering. What's all the fuss about? I'm sorry, darling. I lost my temper. But this can't go on. Mr. Carrington, it is my duty oh, as a yes. 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 Please. Mr. Carrington, it is Please. customized Please. for Please. 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 Charlie. Send her away. Sorry, we can't do anything tonight. Yes, you can. There's a train at 8.45. Mary, ring for a taxi. If there's hurry, she can just catch the 8.45. Am I being dismissed? Mrs. Carrington and I are very grateful for all you've done, but we shan't require your services any longer. I'm responsible only to Dr. Mackin. I'll settle with the doctor. Now, will you please go and pack? Mr. Carrington, I... More coffee? No, thank you, darling. You can take it away, Mary. 
Why, where are you going, Mary? Mrs. Carrington said I could go and see my cousin. And as the taxi's here, I'll go with that nurse. But the weather, it's... Well, she can spend the night with her cousin and come back in the morning. Oh, very well. Here this tune, I think of the first time I ever saw you. Remember? And that enormous black hat you had on. It did look sweet, you know. Charlie, let's go away. Go away? Please take me away tonight. You can't be serious. Charlie, please take me away. Biddy, what's come over you? I don't like it here. But this afternoon you were in love with the place. You're not afraid of the storm, are you? Don't you love me anymore? Of course I love you, but what's that got to do with it? We could go to the continent. France, Charlie. The south of France. Darling, I'm not made of money. Or America. The Queen Mary sails on Monday. We could stay in London till then, couldn't we? You've gone quite mad. You don't love me anymore. Oh, this is utterly absurd. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Really, darling, if you'll tell me what's the matter, I'll try and help you. But I can't go away for a holiday at this time of the year. I've got work to do. Charlie! Charlie, don't ever believe anything Ben tells you. Ben? What's he got to do with it? He wants to hurt me. He'll ruin our lives. Can you please explain all this without becoming so hysterical? Now, please try and be reasonable. I don't want to stay here any longer. We could so easily go tonight. Biddy, I will not talk to you anymore until you come to your senses. This is the national program. Here is the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. The deep depression over Iceland is spreading southeast towards oh, the British Isles. Wind Jane, north to northwest, like reaching wind. gale force. You here? What's wrong? I've got the sack. I thought it's safer to come rather than phone. In a small town like this, you never know who's whose cousin. Mrs. Carrington was left on the 8.45. And on my way out here, I stopped to report to Dr. McAvoy. Why? My duty is a nurse. The analyst's report has come. Well? Negative. You heard what he said about you, Mr. Cheney. Flattery? He thinks you've imagined the whole thing, and he's sorry he ever listened to you. I didn't imagine Charlie's illness. What's his final verdict on that? Stomachache. And in case you ever get it, he sent you this. There's still a couple of details I'd like to get straight. Which of them fired you? He did, but she put him up to it. It was her idea to get rid of Mary, too. Get rid of Mary? Where is she? Staying the night with a cousin. Mrs. Carrington arranged that. Well, why didn't you tell me that at once?
I'm so sleepy. Is that all you have to say? I was naughty, wasn't I? Are you angry with me? No, I'm not angry. I would like some sort of explanation. Why did you do it? You were unkind, Charlie. You shouted at me. Did he? Look at me. I don't understand. You can't go rushing off into a blizzard just because I refuse to listen to some crazy idea about a holiday. Charlie, I love you so terribly. I'm so afraid I'm not good enough for you. Please be sensible. Well, I'm not intelligent like you are. I can't talk about the things that interest you. Whenever I see you with Ellen, I realize what you must miss in me. Biddy. Biddy, tell me honestly. Why did you run off? Well, before I married you, Oh, please don't be angry with me for saying this. I was poor and lonely. You were attractive. I liked you, but I didn't love you. I can tell you this because now I do. Desperately. And? And when I found I loved you like that, I was frightened. And I promised myself that if ever you got tired of me or were sorry you'd married me, I'd run away. Delia, you wanted me to go with you. And you wouldn't. All right. Try and get some sleep now. What are you doing here? Are you all right, Charlie? I said, what are you doing here? I was passing and I saw your car. I just wondered if you were all right. What's happened? Why are you so interested? Oh, I know you're all right. I'll be getting along. No, stay where you are. I want to talk to you now. Well? What have you done to my wife? What do you mean? Why is she afraid of you? Afraid of me? Tell me, Charlie, what has happened? She tried to run away. Blame me for it? What has she told you? Don't hedge. You've done or said something that's terrified her, and you're damn well going to tell me what it is. All right, Charlie, I'll tell you. But believe me, I didn't want to. Remember at tea time I mentioned a name, James McKelvey? Yes. You remember I told you he was a sea captain? Yes. His family were chemists in Edinburgh. James McKelvey ran away to sea, but Hugh, the brother, stayed on. Under his management, the firm grew more and more prosperous. He was a bachelor until he was 48. He disliked the widow. That was why it was such a shock when he got married. Aye, and a greater shock when he saw the bride. So much younger than he was, and a redhead. We all wondered why she married him. You don't mind my saying so, Captain. The brother was set in his ways. He was devoted to his work. Often he'd work here all through the night. And he'd keep his wife sitting there, the very spot where you are now. This was her room. It's just as it was. Nothing's been touched. I wanted it kept like that. How she loved her pretty things. It didn't seem wrong. She was such a pretty creature herself. Didn't you think so, Captain? How old was she? Well, I couldn't say. Somewhere in her twenties. The only thing I didn't trust was that red hair. Do you think it was natural? I admired Maureen's hair. But you see, I always had a weakness for red-headed women. Uh, photographs of Mrs. McKelvey? I've never seen one. She wasn't a photo... Uh, pho what was the word she always said? Photogenic? Yes, that was it. Some people, you know, even if they're handsome, don't take a good picture. I'd sooner face a dentist than a photographer, I should say. Did she? Yes. It was a terrible shock for her when her husband was taken so suddenly. Well, a shock for me, too. He'd never been ill in his life. I was away out on the Caribbean when I got news of my brother's death. It was food poisoning. It was lucky for Mrs. McElvey that Fish didn't agree with her. I grilled a chop for her that night. I remember it as if it was yesterday. Well, maybe she'll return someday. No, she won't. I feel it here. The shock of her husband's death was too much for her. No. It wasn't that. McKelvey was highly insured, you see. He increased his policy after he married Maureen. There was another case. Do you remember the Frenchman we met in the hotel at Monte Carlo? 
The one who thought he recognized Madame Dulac of Bordeaux. Why are you telling me these stories? Because they're facts. After you left, I went over to Bordeaux. The case was almost identical. Madame Dulac's husband died suddenly one Sunday evening. Theodore Dulac, near Bordeaux, marié, for your monsieur. The inquest is too simple and routine. Rien d'extraordinaire, apoplexy, heart failure, a present attack and digestion acute. Immediately after the inquest, uh, the company is always prompt about such things, you know. We sent the wife a check for the sum Mr. Dulac had assigned to her. But he had another policy, a small one, which he had neglected to assign. Part of it should have gone to the widow, and we needed her signature. But she'd gone away. She left no address? No. Her lawyers couldn't trace her? No relations or friends, except uh, some people her husband had introduced her to. I often ask myself, why? Why did she marry him? After his death, we could not console her. One could understand her returning home so quickly, but we are her that she did not once write us a little letter. I often think of her. Poor woman. They needn't have wasted their sympathy. Her husband was insured for 15,000 pounds. The most recent case, the one that led to this investigation, concerns Arthur Jacobs, a Manchester man. Died in January almost a year ago. Also heavily insured. How do you know all this? The similarity between the Jacobs case and the others, especially McKelvey's, was so striking that I was instructed to conduct a complete investigation. I see. So you've been lying to me since the day I met you. Ben Cheney, the charming artist. Coming up here as my friend. Get out. Arthur Jacobs was a jeweler. And he died in January. That's interesting, very interesting. Last January, a man called Raoul Burgess and his wife were living in Paris. There never was a Raoul Burgess. Our agents combed every studio in Paris. No one had ever heard of him. I painted that picture. And I faked the signature. I don't believe you. Mrs. Jacobs, like all the other wives, had left all her possessions behind. Except for one thing. That was too valuable to leave. Arthur Jacobs gave her a black pearl. The ring was worthless. She gave it away. Who to? We traced that pearl to Monte Carlo. You're wrong, you know. You've no proof of anything. We've no proof of crime yet. But if James McKelvey should identify her as his brother's widow, criminal proceedings will follow. I've had enough. Get out! I found that bag by the car. I think you'd better look inside.
Have you been down here all night? Oh, you poor darling. You must have fallen asleep in the chair. Aren't you going to say good morning? Oh, you feel better when you've had your coffee. I'll go and put it on. Mary didn't get back. Isn't it quiet after that dreadful storm? I was so frightened. The road's vanished. There's not a trace of it. We must be snowed up. We're cut off and alone. Now you look much better. Mm, nice and smooth. This'll do you good. I know what's upset you. It's that silly old ring, isn't it? That's why you're angry with me. I was naughty, darling. I didn't mean to give it away. But I do love pretty things. I know how you hate a lie. That's one of the things I admire so much about you, your honesty. But I didn't want Sylvia to have my ring. You do understand, don't you? I wonder how you'd look with red hair. <sighs> Would you like me to dye it? McKelvey's wife had red hair. Sit down, Bedelia. Why were you so upset yesterday when Ben mentioned Captain McKelvey? Why do you say I was upset? I've never heard of Captain... Whatever his name is. McKelvey's brother was your husband, wasn't he? Oh, what a silly question. You know Ralph Burgess is my only husband besides you, dear. Listen, Bedelia, we've got to talk this out. Oh, I hate that wretched ring. I wish I'd given it to Sylvia. It's never brought me anything but bad luck. Arthur Jacobs gave it to you, didn't he? It's worthless. You couldn't get five pounds for it in London. So he did give it to you. You've got to stop lying to me. Ben Cheney's a liar. I warned you about him. He's been against me from the beginning. What about Jacobs? Why didn't you tell me you were married to him? It was so awful, Charlie. He was mean and cruel. I had to forget. That seems hard to believe. You married me under a false name. Burgess was my maiden name. Perhaps we're not even legally married at all. But I want to be married to you, Charlie. What about the others? There were no others. Only Arthur Jacobs and you. Oh, I have such a headache. What about McKelvey? What about Dulac? Or were they so mean and cruel you don't want to remember them either? I'm innocent! Innocent of what? I hate men! They're rotten beasts! I wish all the men in the world were dead! Yes, you've had a hard time of it, haven't you? I didn't choose them. They came along, they wanted me. The real story of your life must be very different from the one you told me. Oh, if I'd had the sort of life she's had, I'd be good enough for you. She? Ellen! You don't know. You, your world, it's all so sweet and lovely, isn't it? Your world's so nice. Jam and sweets every day. Presents at Christmas. My grandfather bought the overmantel from Italy. The garden's divine when the roses are in bloom. Divine! Divine! Stop it! Divine! Quiet! <laughs> Quiet, darling. Say it, Charlie. Say it quiet, darling. Quiet, darling. Oh, Charlie, you're so good to me. I never knew a man could be like you. Oh, why didn't I meet you before? Don't leave me. You needn't be afraid. I'd never hurt you. Don't ever stop loving me. Mr. 
town. Wasn't it a terrible storm? The buses couldn't get through the snow. Thanks, Mr. Jones. You're welcome, sir. Good morning, madam. I'm sorry I was so late, but happened it was Providence. Grocers wouldn't have delivered today. What have you brought, Mary? Oh, it isn't all ours. I phoned Anna. I thought it best to see if they were wanting anything. And it's lucky I did, because Mr. Cheney's having a gentleman for lunch. It's that friend of his, the captain he's been expecting all week. He came last night by the 11 o'clock train, but he had to stop at the hotel because the roads were blocked. I got them some of that smoked salmon. Yeah, Mary, let me... Anna, send in a boy for Mr. Cheney's basket. Will you put it on the table, Mr. Charles? Mrs. Carrington looks poorly this morning. Yes, she's got rather a bad headache, Mary. I've got somebody coming along. Oh. Can you please direct us to Bracknell House? Yes, about half a mile up the road, on the left. Many thanks. Lovely morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mary, have you seen Mr. Carrington? Yes, madam, he's gone out to the car. Oh, thank you. Would you go up and do my room? Yes, madam. Should I finish the washing up? It'll only take two minutes. No, no, leave it. Go and do my room at once. Yes, madam. Oh, and there'll be a boy calling to pick up this basket for Mr. Cheney. Don't worry, I'll give it to him. What are you doing? I came down to feed Topaz. Well, we'd forgotten about her. Why didn't you call Mary? Oh, well, Mary's busy. We're very late this morning. I mustn't keep Topaz waiting. I'll get some sardines. She seems to be doing pretty well for herself. Charlie, stop her! Let her have it. Ben can't eat it now. No, no, take it away! Don't let her have it! Why? Charlie! What? Charlie, stop her! Why? Please! Please! Why? Charlie! You better start packing. Darling, are we going away? Better hurry. There won't be much time. Oh, I knew it. I knew you'd change your mind. I shan't be going with you. But I'd die without you. You wouldn't let me go alone. You won't be going alone. You've turned against me, too. But you made a mistake. You're wrong about what happened downstairs. You don't understand. I'm afraid I do. The poison was meant for Ben. Charlie, I've made a decision. I'm going to give you my money. Every shilling of it. It's all yours. That money? 45,000 pounds. 45,000 pounds? You're mad. Absolutely mad. But you'll never stop loving me, Charlie. I loved a woman that doesn't exist. Yes. 
Hello, Ben. Yes, I know he's here. Anytime you like. Come now. No, no you're not going to let him take me away. I couldn't stand it. They'll hurt me. I'm not strong. I'm... I'm ill. Yes, I know. I've never told you. I, I've kept it from you so you should worry. But it's serious. I'm very ill. Incurable. I'm sorry to disturb you, madam, but you forgot to tell me about lunch. Lunch? Yes. Yes, of course. Um, soup. Mushroom omelette. Oh, Mr. Charles always liked that, madam. And cheese and biscuits? Yes, madam. Anything else? Yes, Mary, there is something else. Will you make a phone call for me? Of course I will, madam. Carrington doesn't like eating alone. Would you ring the office and ask Miss Ellen to come? Miss Ellen, won't you be here, madam? No, Mary. You look after them. about her motives. She killed for money. But there was still an enigma. The enigma of the soul of a human being who could commit murder. Bedelia could caress. And with those same soft hands poisoned in cold blood. In that delicate balance of good and evil lies the deepest of human mysteries. The problem that no detective, physician or psychologist has ever solved.